If you're always standing around, pacing up and down, sitting drinking coffee, fed up waiting for your EV to finish charging, you're charging totally wrong. Stop doing it wrong. Dave Takes It On will show you how to dramatically reduce your charging time and get you to your destination much, much quicker. This method will save you many hours on a single long road trip. Well, recently in response to a subscriber's comment, I told him it takes longer to charge from 20% to 90% than it does from 50% to 90%. And he told me I was wrong. He pointed out that in my video, Top 5 Charging Tips, well, there's a link to that at the end of this video, I state you should not charge until your stated charge gets below 30%, preferably less than 20%, because it will charge faster. Surely it can't be faster and longer, he said. Both of those statements cannot be true. But yes, both statements are 100% correct, and my subscriber admitted that he was totally confused. So let's find out how both those statements are correct and how you can dramatically reduce the time you have to wait while charging. Let me say right now, if you don't worry about sitting around waiting while your car charges, then switch the video off right here. Just arrive at any charger you want, at any state of charge you happens to have, plug it in, sit and wait till it reaches the limit that you've set, and then drive off. Life and EV charging can be really simple, but painfully slow. Most of us don't like waiting. Or maybe we're working. Time is money or on a road trip and actually can't stand or sit around for 40 minutes or longer while our car charges. For us, anything that cuts down the waiting time is important, possibly vital. Well, I think all VEV owners know that when your state of charge is really low and you plug in, the rate at which it charges is really high. My Model S has a maximum charging rate of 150 kilowatts, and if I wait till my car is really empty, say way less than 5%, I can get 130, 140 kilowatts when I first plug in. But then that drops really quite quickly. Within a few minutes, it'll be down below 100 kilowatts. Then it tapers off until by the end, it's down to maybe 10 or 20 kilowatts, really slow. This is your charging curve. Your battery management system strictly controls the power it receives from the charger to protect your battery from overheating or serious damage. Every make of EV will have a slightly different shape, but all follow that same pattern. Now for this calculation, I'm going to use my car's actual figures. I have an 80 kilowatt hour usable battery, a maximum charge rate of 150 kilowatts, and my car gets 3 miles per kilowatt hour. By the way, a kilowatt relates to the power flowing, a kilowatt hour relates to the amount of power stored. So here is a very, very simplified charging graph for my car. With the battery at between 0 and 10% state of charge, the car can accept all the 150 kilowatts coming from the charger. Now in real life it never quite does, but in this case let's say it does. As the battery fills, the rate drops. So now between 10 and 20%, it only takes 135 kilowatts, and so on. Between 50 and 60, it can only accept 75, and between 90 and 100%, <coughs> it's slowed down dramatically to just 15 kilowatts. This is totally normal. All EVs do it, and there's almost nothing you can do to change it. But what does it tell us? Well, let's now look in detail at the first 10 kilowatt hours that go into the battery. To fill that first 10 kilowatt hours at 150 kilowatts takes 1 15th of an hour. That's four minutes. To fill the second 10 kilowatt from 10% to 20%, the rate of charge has dropped now to 135 kilowatts, so it takes a bit longer. Four minutes, 26 seconds. Still really fast. But as we proceed, the rate drops and the time increases. From 40 to 50%, it now accepts only 90 kilowatts from the charger, so that takes a bit longer still. Six minutes, 42 seconds until finally, between 90% and 100%, it takes an agonising 40 minutes. So this graph now clearly tells you what you're doing wrong and how to speed up your charging time. Has anyone spotted it yet? Well, if not, keep watching. This is fascinating. Imagine my 80 kilowatt car on the motorway. 
It has a speed limit of 100 mile an hour. <laughs> yeah, in your dreams. There is no traffic and our destination is a thousand miles away. There are services every few miles and each one has a vacant 150 kilowatt charger fully operational, just waiting for you. Yeah, this is definitely a dream. So there's absolutely no range anxiety. You can stop whenever you want. You've charged up overnight, either on your home charger at off-peak rates or at a supercharger the night before. So you set off from home at 100 mile an hour with 100% state of charge. As we drive, our battery state of charge steadily drops and we continue until it reaches 10%. And then we pull in and stop. We pull in, plug in, set the charge limit to 100% and head in for a coffee. I have allowed an extra five minutes at each stop, apart from the actual charging time, for slowing down, stopping, plugging in, unplugging and accelerating back up to 100 mile an hour. Well, we've actually used 90% of our battery, 72 kilowatt hours. We got three miles per kilowatt hour, so we've driven 216 miles. And it's taken us two hours and 10 minutes of driving. Using our charging curve graph, we know that when we plug in at 10% state of charge, we'll only get 135 kilowatts from the charger initially, and that will drop to 15 kilowatts by the time we reach the 90%. Adding up the times for each 10 kilowatt hours added, 4.5 minutes, 5, 5.7, etc., we find that the total charging time needed is just over 1 hour 54 minutes plus our five minutes slowing down, etc. Round that up to two hours. Now that's plenty of time for a comfort break, full three course meal and a decent snooze afterwards. This is exactly what most people do. Plug in, charge to 100% because they're on a road trip, then set off. Why? The next 216 miles is exactly the same and the next and the next. We need a total of four stops to reach our destination and it will have taken us the grand total of 10 hours driving, plus four stops of two hours each. That's 18 hours total journey time. Remember that figure. So now for something completely different. We're going to set off from home with the same 100% state of charge, drive at the same 100 mile an hour until we reach the same 10% state of charge, two hours, 10 minutes, exactly the same as before. But this time when we stop, we will set the charging limit to only 50%. From our graph, the first 10 kilowatt hours added is identical, taking us from 10 to 20% in 4 minutes 30 seconds, as is the next and the next and the next, until it hits 50% and we stop charging. The total charging time is 22 minutes. Plus we add on the extra five minutes for slowing down, etc. Makes 27 minutes stop. And we're back driving at 100 miles an hour. Barely time for our comfort break, a coffee and a lemon drizzle muffin. Obviously we can't drive as far. In fact, we can now only cover 120 miles. That's 40 kilowatt hours at three miles per kilowatt hour. Before we get back to the same 10% state of charge and have to stop. We will obviously need more stops. In fact, we need a total of nine. Each one takes 27 minutes. So the total journey time, charging to only to 50% each time, takes 10 hours driving, same as before, and four hours, five minutes total charging time, making 14 hours, five minutes for the whole journey. So what was the previous time I asked you to remember, charging up to 100% each time? Oh yeah, 18 hours. The Dave takes it on. Total journey time charging to only 50% is very nearly four hours quicker. Oh, out of interest, if you charge to 70% each time, the total journey time is 15 hours and 48 minutes. Still well over two hours quicker. These are exactly the same calculations Formula One teams make when working out how many pit stops you need to get to the end of the race. An extra pit stop costs time. But with fresh tyres, you can go much quicker. And for us, charging nine times, but for 27 minutes each time, is far, far quicker than charging four times each for two hours. But the time saving is actually even larger, with something I haven't yet mentioned, and only a very few of you will have spotted. Back to both the opening statements. Yes, a car at 20% state of charge will charge at a quicker rate than a car at 90% state of charge. That's your charging curve. 
and to add 10 kilowatt hours at 20 percent stated charge will be quicker than adding 10 kilowatt hours at 90 percent stated charge but to add 90 kilowatt hours all in one go will take very much longer than adding 40 kilowatt hours in two stops each starting at a state of charge of 10 percent and going up to 50 percent in my top five tips video i did state always know where you'll charge next only charge below a 30 percent stated charge less than 20 percent is even better and only put in the minimum amount needed to get there okay plain english more shorter stops is far quicker than charging to 100 percent every time by the way, have you spotted the extra bonus you get from shorter stops? I bet you haven't. I've made every stop exactly 27 minutes. Enough time for a comfort break, a coffee and a donut. But we haven't allowed for the fact that on a 14 hour journey, one stop will be for lunch and one will be for dinner. And a leisurely lunch might take quite a bit longer than 30 minutes. A dinner definitely will. At these two stops, and these only, we reset the charge limit to 80% and leave the car plugged in until we finish. That extra few minutes charging, where we are not waiting for the car, we're still eating. It's waiting for us. We'll remove at least one entire stop, possibly even two on our journey. A road trip should be fun. Take your time. Make more quicker stops. A business trip should aim to reduce charging time to a minimum, make even more stops. I'd rather get to my destination, work or leisure, three or four hours earlier than spend those exact same three or four hours sitting in a motorway services waiting for my car to finish charging. But I bet 90% of EV drivers on a road trip will still charge to 100% every stop moan about how long its charging takes and think that's the fastest way of doing it. Strange. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this informative. Please click the like button and subscribe. It really helps the channel bring you more content like this. I'm Dave.